not feeling so well this morning. I, <clears throat> I got up, I actually was awakened uh, violently ill this morning. Uh, I think I ate something bad. I've been, I've been on a little fast. And, uh, but I think, you know, kind of fasting like 12 hours a day. But then when I went to go eat yesterday, I think I got a hold of something that made me sick. And uh, I'm still feeling some of the impacts of that. Just pray for me, y'all, because this, this kind of has an impact of me getting done what I want to get done. I got my uh, keyboard and tow. I got the monsters. Michael likes the monsters. Helps keep them awake while we're in the studio. I have absolutely no voice today, but I'm gonna try this anyway. I will trust in the Lord. I, woo, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I <laughs> I don't know what's going on. It is Texas allergies and uh, got my throat clogged up. Yeah. I've had a lot of stuff on my mind. You know, this fast is bringing a lot of stuff up for me, and things I need to deal with in my spirit. You know, a lot of things dealing with resentment and anger and, and, and frustrations. And you know, you think you think that you have let go of certain things, and uh, but it's quite possible that you've just kind of covered it up, covered it up, and called it something else. When I begin to recall the abuse that um, I endured as um, a young teenager, um, the, the extent of the emotional and spiritual damage was pretty significant. I dealt with a, a great deal of anger that was uh, not only directed at the church and that particular pastor, as there was a great deal of deception involved uh, and his, you know, trying to cover his tracks once things began to become revealed. But there indeed was a great deal of anger that was directed toward the church and toward God. I remember saying to myself, you know, I really didn't want anything else to do with God and the church. There came to a point where I had so much anger toward the church that I, I, I said, I don't want anything else to do with this. And even though I've spent many years uh, coming through addiction and coming through homelessness and resolving my issues and my feelings around those times in my life, there are times when we still have scars. I had developed so much distrust for the institution of church that I didn't want anything else to do with it. And even today, sometimes I uh, go to churches and I'm functioning in different arenas, whether I'm ministering or whether I'm functioning as a minister of music and I hear certain things or I see certain behaviors and a trigger, it's like a switch goes off in me. My spirit just shuts down and, and chokes off like a tourniquet. And I can't receive anything else that will be going on in that service because I go into like this self-protection mode and also become a, a, a defender of, of others who may be susceptible to receiving this venomous, poisonous words and actions that have nothing to do with the love of Christ. And I begin to respond in such a way that uh, endeavors to protect myself and protect others from this harmful, venomous, poisonous stuff that has infected um, so many of our churches in America. 
uh, uh, words and and damaging actions that are not from the Spirit of God. So I boldly stand in opposition to any false prophet, uh, pastor, uh, apostle, evangelist, uh, bishop, Sunday school teacher, or worship leader, or, or gospel music artist that, that stands before people and and in any way minimizes or degrades or demeans the life experience of a gay, lesbian, bisexual, or transgendered person by means of using scriptural texts or or the claim of uh, operating in the spirit or just God told me so, I would say you are not operating in the spirit of God. And I challenge you to re-examine the source of your information. Now, to anyone who has been damaged by these words or who has come out of bad church experiences and have, have received uh, venomous uh, words from, from uh, people claiming to oper be operating in the spirit of God, I say this. You are not going to be able to move forward in your relationship with God without first forgiving those who have hurt you and who have harmed you. When you hold on to resentment and bitterness and stuff, it just eats you up. But this fast is really helping me to really take a hard look at myself and surrender some things to the Lord. Uh, there is a mourning process involved with letting go of things that you've been holding on to for so long and even though they may not be uh, 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 healthy for you, you've become uh, comfortable with it and accustomed to uh, uh, using that as an excuse uh, to, feel that the way, to feel the way you do. Um, but God is uh, still wanting to go deeper with us, so I, I encourage you not to neglect fasting and prayer in your life. It is um, significant uh, to our relationships with God and growing.
As a gay, lesbian, or bisexual, or transgendered person, the devil would want to have you living in fear that you are not a recipient of the grace of God. Would want to have you believe that you are on your way to hell. Indeed, that may be true if you choose not to believe upon Christ as the propitiation for your sins. But I'm telling you by virtue of your gayness, by virtue of just being who you are, you are in no wise separated or excluded from being a part of the body of Christ. So I encourage you today that God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. That perfect love casts out all fear. You need to know that God can use you right where you're at and in whatever situation you are in. If you will yield to the Spirit of God, that's all God wants is a willing vessel. Let the love of God flow through you and let him use you every single day, no matter where you're at. I went to the bank and I went on to the store and uh, you know I was supposed to be on my little fast and got out of the bank and I uh, was it was it was all in my head and in my mind I was on my way to the family dollars gonna get me some barbecue chips and a great pop and the Holy Spirit convicted and reminded me you supposed to be fast until six o'clock amen and so I held on so I went and got my little uh, went and got my little smart water and be faithful, and be faithful. Thank you for reminding me, Holy Ghost. I just got back from the bank, uh, making the deposit and uh, uh, paying bills for the church. It just seems like, you know, God continues to keep blessing. It seems like we got down to the wire uh, this month uh, financially. Uh, we were about a uh, hundred and Twenty-one dollars in the hole at the end of the month, and the Lord miraculously provided through uh, the people of God, and uh, we were able to make our expenses today uh, to pay the rent uh, for Atmosphere of Praise Ministries to continue going forward. Uh, today's April first. Uh, God continues to uh, going into seven, actually going into our eighth year of ministry. Um, next month in May, we'll be celebrating our uh, 7th anniversary, and uh, God is just continuing to do awesome, awesome, awesome things uh, and blessing the lives of those who um, choose to serve Him. And it doesn't really matter who you are, um, if you choose to serve the Lord, uh, the blessings that uh, come along with that relationship belong to you so it doesn't really matter if you're 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 straight or if you're gay or bisexual or transgendered or lesbian or, or, or whatever it is if you put your trust in the Lord and you're obedient to uh, the ways of God um, you're entitled to them through so don't worry don't fret uh, don't get yourself worked up about what other people are saying uh, continue to pursue and go after the things of building today. You know, we've been uh, uh, subject to the stories of the Bible and, and reading about how God has done awesome things in the lives of people that came before us. But I need you to know the story is still being written. We are living epistles. God is still writing about, uh, uh, writing his story through us. And those of us who will be obedient to the Lord are, can be a part of that story, a part of that testimony that helps uh, people uh, to connect to a real and relevant relationship with
locked up. I can't sing. So it looks like when I go back into the studio next week, um, I'm just going to be having to lay tracks. I ain't not going to be able to sing. I don't know. I'm just believing God. Y'all pray with me that this uh, allergy season will pass uh, quickly. <clears throat> I just bind and rebuke uh, the spirit of infirmity. Um, sickness has no place in my body. And I just ask you, Lord, to continue to do the work. Uh, but I just thank you that if this... Uh, shuts me down for a little while, and um, I know that your will will be accomplished anyway, God. I just thank you. I just thank you, Lord. I give you the glory. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen.